the YouTube gurus want me to give you some sort of nickname, you know, like the Lady Gaga monsters, Rihanna Navy, or, you know, nerd fighters, things like that. So we're gonna try a few of those in this video. It's so that you can feel associated with my brand. Hi, Step Backaroos. It your boy, Tristan, and we're gonna do a spooky Halloween story. If you've watched or read a few vampire stories over the years, or like me, played this ridiculous 90s VHS board game. My name is Countess Elizabeth. Bathory. You might know about Elizabeth Bathory. She was a Hungarian countess who, by many accounts, seems to have been a bloodthirsty monster. A woman who literally bathed in the blood of virgins in order to stay young. Wikipedia calls her one of the most prolific serial killers in history. But uh, what's the story here? Who was this blood countess really? Elizabeth Bathory was a noblewoman from Hungary. At the time, the Hungarian kingdom was in a state of constant warfare and chaos, whether it be religious turmoil on the inside or continuous war in Eastern Europe against the Ottoman Turks to the south. She was born to an influential family in Transylvania, spoke four languages, and was the niece of the mighty ruler of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. She had everything going for her is what I'm saying. Through a political marriage, she and her husband became very powerful, with massive holdings to manage. Then, her husband left to go fight the Turks and never returned, leaving the widowed Elizabeth to be the ruler of an enormous estate. That's all the standard stuff, but things get a little creepy pretty fast. Throughout her life, accusations flew of her legendary cruelty, and rumors grew of her mutilating and murdering young women sent to her from other nobles to learn the ways of high society. Stories of these atrocities spread throughout the Kingdom of Hungary, which led to an investigation in 1610. Through testimonies from those who worked in the house and the interrogation of her closest confidants, the Palatine of Hungary, Georgi Turzo, uncovered a horrifying narrative. The Countess would brutally burn and mutilate young girls. Bathory reportedly would beat these young girls, sting them with nettles, cut them, force them to eat parts of themselves, and other horrific tortures I think if I elaborated might hurt me in the old monetization department. When this crime against humanity came to light. Many of Bathory's inner circle was brutally executed. But for Elizabeth herself, she had another fate. Her sentence is one many nobles convicted of crimes might face rather than the axe. They imprisoned Elizabeth in her room and bricked up all the exits with a hole only big enough to let air in and give her food. For four years, she lingered in this confinement until she eventually passed away. Elizabeth was initially buried nearby, but the townsfolk were so angry about it, she was disinterred and sent to her home for a final resting place in her family crypt. Today, we don't know the location of her body. Well, Validation Gang, I guess you could imagine that this story, with all of its gruesome and dark details, perfect fodder for a good Halloween story, might have a few problems. But this wasn't an easy myth to crack it's still actually debated about whether or not she was a serial killer. Her investigation was above board for the time, and there were many testimonies to her guilt. Primary sources, contemporary to her life, is about as good as a historian gets. And so this was a pretty open and shut case. Heck, the Wikipedia page for Elizabeth Bathory is still fully in on the serial killer narrative. It was not until we got a hold of postmodernism we decided to interrogate the Elizabeth Bathory story and apply just a bit of skepticism. And I mean real skepticism, which is like the opposite of YouTube skepticism. Come with me friends while I ruin another great myth from history and make it something about gender. First, Let's evaluate the evidence. I said that her case was made primarily through testimonies of her staff and the interrogation of her inner circle, which was primarily made up of women and one male relative. Okay, I said interrogation, but I meant... Yeah, back then confession under torture was considered really reliable. But in modern times, we've done a lot of research into this and found quite the opposite is true. What torture really accomplishes is to get the victim to confess to whatever they think the torturer wants them to hear. And her staff had a pretty good reason to go along with the story. Elizabeth Bathory was definitely not a nice person. 
Beating your servants was a common occurrence in 16th and 17th century Hungary, but she was known to be particularly brutal. Some historians suspect she was overcompensating in much the same way Elizabeth I did in England, because she was a woman in power and wanted to be taken seriously. And on that note, we should talk about her political position. She was a woman in charge of a lot of land in one of the most chaotic times in Hungary's history. While legally there was no problem with her holding said title, if you play Crusader Kings 2, you'll know a woman holding a title is a precarious position. Some historians have a theory that the rumors of horrific murders were played up or sown by relatives and rivals who wanted a chunk of her property. The speed at which her family swooped in once this investigation began is enough to arouse suspicion. Oh, and all of the records of this were destroyed in order to save face for the Kingdom of Hungary. Uh-huh. Sure. The last major point to think about is how much her story seems mythologized. Elizabeth Bathory's infamy happened during an obsession with vampire stories. A few years after her death, the story of Elizabeth was retold with new details, including her obsession with bathing in the blood of virgins to maintain her youth. Many of the cruel tortures that she supposedly did sound a lot like sort of the macabre things you'd see in a Saw movie. Is Saw still relevant? Eh, I didn't like the series anyway, but yeah, they did seem rather dramatic. Now, while this doesn't rule out that this is what happened, it does ring a lot to me as a rumor mill gone wild. Also, some of her torture methods, like slathering people with honey and letting them get stung by wasps and devoured by ants, is pretty similar to scaphism, a torture method Plutarch wrote about apparently happening in ancient Persia and is considered pretty suspect. But it was probably a well-known scary story to people in Hungary about the evil people from the east, like maybe the Turks they were at war with. Also, I should mention the burning, prickling with nettles, and bleeding of young girls could well be the ever-flowing font of horrible things from history pre-scientific medicine. And I mean, the idea of the Blood Countess is a compelling story. It really sucks to lose a narrative about such a cartoonishly evil woman existing 400 years ago. Historians defended all the way to some claiming Elizabeth Bathory's lust for blood was due to anemia and that she was iron deficient from her periods. I can only imagine what man thought of that one. And as I mentioned earlier, she was a woman in power and in her 50s when she died. If you remember my video about Brewsters and witches, you'll know women over a certain age tend to get dragged through the mud as far as culture is concerned. So my corporate nickname to build brand identity Let's bring a deep cut from Step Back's past and invoke Occam's Razor, y'all. Do you think that Elizabeth Bathory was a macabre serial killer or a victim of court intrigue? It's still something legitimately debated, so let's legitimately debate it down in them comments. Damn, I feel like I just did like a true crime podcast or like a Netflix show or something. I just tried to redeem one of the great monsters from history. I also took a spooky story perfect for Halloween and made it a story about gender and court intrigue. Well, I guess it is what it is. Finished I am, and so 